With the 50th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Aziz Ojolari, linebacker, Georgia. All right, Aziz Ojolari had a little bit of a knee issue. If not for that, he would have gone in the first round. He's very polished. With and we welcome you to Big Blue Draft Night Live, presented by Van Heusen. I'm Bob Papa. You heard Darius Slayton of the New York Giants make the announcement. They get their edge rusher, Aziz Ojolari, out of Georgia. And a lot of people thought that this was a player the Giants were going to take at 42. Instead, they work a trade with the Miami Dolphins. They pick up the Dolphins' third-round draft pick in 2022, and they get their man. We're going to hear from Ojolari. We're going to discuss it. And I'm joined by Super Bowl champions Sean O'Hara and David Deal. Guys, uh, pretty exciting, fast and furious. So many, many trades going on around the NFL. A lot of people thought the Giants might take Ojolari earlier in this draft. They wind up gaining a pick and still getting their man. Yeah, Bob, I mean, listen, Dave Gettleman trades back in the first round, trades back in the second round, and yet Ojolari was still there. Uh, Dave, I know, I know you really liked him as well. The fact that he w did not go in the first round, I think, brought some questions around because he certainly had first-round talent, uh, an extremely talented edge rusher, Bob. I think when you look at his skills and his ability to kind of run that rim, as we call it, run the circle and not lose any speed is why he's such a dominant rusher. And I thought he had the most polished hands coming out of this draft as far as a pass rusher. Does a great job knocking the hands down. And like I said, that little dip and rip that you know so well. Absolutely. I mean, when I, I think about Oziz Ojolari, it reminds me so much of O.C. Uminura. The ability to run the hoop, bend edge, that explosive first step and the get off at the line of scrimmage. And the thing that you love about him is he uses his length, those long arms, to not give a surface area to offensive tackles and really control leverage with his hands inside out. He's very physical and violent with his hands. And the one thing that you love about him is his ability to have counter moves. As you said, the push-pull, you see the one-arm stab, the speed to power. He has some inside counter moves. And that's one area where you can continue to see him improve as a redshirt sophomore. He's only going to get better and better as he continues to work on those counter moves when he faces elite left tackles in the NFL. Yeah, we're seeing some of those speed moves right now with the highlights, Bob. And, you know, he's a finisher. I tell you, you look at his production – Led the SEC in sacks last year with eight and a half. I think, you know, Dave just talked about the, the, the comparables. Or it reminds me a little bit of OCU Manure. He's got a little Yannick Ngakwe in him with the yep. hand battle and with, with the quick twitch. I think when you look at the smarts, too, you know, he played the Jack linebacker position down in Georgia. They played like a 3-3-5 kind of hybrid defense. And Kirby Smart moved him all over the field. So he stood up in a two-point and rushed the quarterback. He had his hand down in the dirt. So the one thing that we know the Giants and Joe Judge love is versatility. Yeah, and guys, the other thing, too, is, um, you know, this is a guy that can get after the quarterback. And, and the Giants did a really good job last year under Patrick Graham's scheme of trying to scheme things and get pressure on the quarterback. Very creative in doing so. But at the end of the day, it certainly helps to have guys that do that for a living, so to speak, that – you know, when you don't have to send the house and a guy can just beat somebody else one on one, it's going to help this team immeasurably. No question. I think when we talked about it last year with this Giants defense ability to stop the run, we were talking about the front four being able to stop it with uh, Martinez in the background and being able to be that fifth man. Just think about the flexibility now with Ojolari on the outside, Dexter Lawrence on the interior to push the depth of the pocket, and then you also have on the other side Leonard Williams. Now you have offensive coordinators and offensive lines thinking, okay, where are we going to slide protections? Are we going to have to chip with our back to the outside to the offensive tackle, or are we going to have to release him to the B-gap to help out with Leonard Williams? This allows you to have those matchup nightmares for offensive coordinators and offensive lines and allows you versatility in where you move them on the D-line. Yeah, you got to really love that that kind of production, that kind of versatility. And for the Giants, you know, look, anytime you have a chance to get a guy that can help you out on third down, you know, I kind of flash back to, you know, Dave, when, when you and I were playing with the Giants, we had Strahan, we already had O.C. We end up picking up Justin Tuck, and we're saying, man, what are we going to do with this extra pass rusher? Well, on third down, he kicked inside. So for Ojolari, I think he's got that ability. Um, I think he's got that skill, and, and it's, it, this is a nice pickup for the Giants to be able to get him this deep into the second round when he had such a high grade on him. 
Guys, let's talk about some of the overarching themes here for the Giants. Um, clearly, a couple of players that they had graded out high in the first round came off the board. They had a deal in place with Chicago, and they wind up making a heck of a move because they get a wide receiver, and they stockpile some draft picks. They get a fifth round for this year, and then they get the Bears' first-round pick next year and their fourth-round pick, and they still get a playmaker, something that they were looking for. Fast forward to tonight, they're sitting there at 42. Clearly, there were a couple of players that were high on their board that other teams took ahead of them. So they had the wherewithal to be able to trade back, and they're still getting their edge rusher, and they suddenly added another third-round pick for next year. So Dave Gettleman and this front office are really working the board, you know, a la a Belichick, and getting players, but also preparing for next year's draft which is expected to be a very deep draft. Yeah, it's going to be a deep draft, so a talented class coming out, certainly. And I think next year, Bob, will be a lot easier to evaluate, guys, because you're not going to have as many opt-outs. Obviously, this year with the draft, there's so many players that didn't play or that had limited game film because of COVID and the limited amount of games that their team could schedule. So next year definitely will be a factor. I think you look at the pipeline right now, too, and I think this pick right here, no doubt the Giants had all kinds of intel on him. I know there was some concern. He, he tore his ACL, Ojolari did, in high school. And so there was concern about, about a possible knee. But as far as a player, um, as far as the, the type of person that he is, listen, you go down to, to your old offensive lineman, your left tackle, Andrew Thomas went against him every day in practice down in Georgia. Lorenzo Carter, a couple of years ago, who the Giants drafted, you know, he was a teammate of his as well. So all kinds of intel on the type of player he is, the type of guy he is in the weight room, the type of player he is in watching film, uh, the type of character that he has. No doubt the Giants are building that nice culture here. Not only that, but you think about this football team building this roster around the schemes of both Patrick Graham's defense and uh, on the other side, Jason Garrett's offense. And then you think about continuing to build depth and the future of this organization as well. So when you're able to sit there, like we did in the first round, to move from 11 to 20 and still get an elite explosive athlete and to continue to build for 2022, it allows you the opportunity to get the player you need now but not have to press and push to pick somebody that you don't think is worth the value at 11. Guys, the other thing here is um, it's not as if the Giants are giving up on anybody. But as Joe Judge always says, we don't have a depth chart, and every guy's got to earn his spot. So, you know, Lorenzo Carter showed a lot of things last year before he got hurt. Started to look like he was maturing into the player that the Giants thought they were getting when they drafted him. Uh, O'Shane Ziminis is one of these players that has some upside to him. Well, it's going to be put up or shut up time for those guys as far as staying on the field contributing because now there's legitimate competition at that edge rusher form, which will only make everybody better. Yeah, and let's throw Carter Coughlin into the mix and Cam Brown as well. Uh, you know, Tay Crowder was more of a, a nickel backer, Mr. Irrelevant. But, you know, you look at what the Giants are doing with the roster. They're getting phenomenal athletes, guys that can contribute on special teams as well as what you're talking about, create competition for these guys, getting after the quarterback on the edge of the defense and some versatility to move around. So uh, that aspect of it, I know, is, is a big part of it. Obviously, Joe Judge with his special teams uh, background and, and uh, his expertise, all of those guys make your team better on the third phase of the game. But also to go along with that, Sean, I think one of the great things about having the different versatile type of players to play inside, it allows you flexibility. You think about some of the best defensive lines in the NFL. It's almost like hockey line shifts, two in, two out, three in, three out. And when you have players that can create those mismatches up against the offensive line, compared to who you're playing scheme-wise that upcoming week, it allows you flexibility with what you want to do defensively. And fresh legs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna we're gonna hear we're gonna hear from Aziz in, in a couple of minutes, and we're gonna do the same thing once the Giants make their pick in the third round. Although with the way Dave Gettleman's going, he may push that back a little bit as well and keep stockpiling picks. Guys, uh, obviously, offensive line is an area that the Giants also are looking to fortify. We saw a run of offensive linemen going fast and furious. Do you guys feel that there's still some quality left in this draft when the Giants make their next pick in round number three? Yeah, there's definitely some good offensive linemen out there. And, you know, I think about uh, Creed Humphreys, the center from, from Oklahoma. Um, he, he's, he's a stud and he's a physical guy. 
I think when I look at the Giants right now and with the competition they have uh, with the interior, Will Hernandez is going to have a shot at right guard. Shane Lemieux, I, I think, is is going to end up being the left guard. And then, you know, when, when you look at the center position, I think that they would love to have a little bit of competition there. But I think when you look at, um, you know, th- this draft right now, they, I feel like they think that they fixed the offensive line last year. They, they invested three picks. Matt Parrott, we haven't even talked about him. I think they want him to be a part of that mix. And, and I think when you look at the investment that they made last year, it's not something they have to reach for, Bob. It's not something that is like, hey, that's a pressing need. Um, but, you, you know, there, is some, there are some guys in the third or fourth round that I think could help. And I agree with you. I mean, you always talk about how hard it is to transition from the college game to the pro game as it is without people sitting out because of COVID for the year. So then now when you think about it, when you're looking at somebody, when you saw the drop off from the top tackles and the top guards, now once you start getting into the fourth and fifth round, these are developmental players that you know that it's going to take a year or two to get them up to speed with the techniques and fundamentals to thrive in the NFL. You know, this is where a lot of these players that some people may think, well, maybe he's a tackle. Well, maybe he's a guard. Well, if they had a year of 2020 under their belt, they wouldn't be second guessing those picks. Whoa, 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 David Deal. Hold on a second. (laughs) What do you mean? What do you mean a fifth round draft pick could be a developmental player? You were a fifth round draft pick and you were a starter from day one and you had this long ass streak of starting games and winning Super Bowls. Don't call fifth rounders developmental players. Uh, well, at that same token, with you saying that, I was also at the University of Illinois for five years. I did play each and every one of those years, and I had a great offensive line coach in Harry Heastan. So that's what allowed me the flexibility to be a fifth round draft pick and start for the New York Giants, let alone running the same exact offense for my five years at Illinois that we ran on uh, my uh, rookie season. Here. Some guys just develop faster than others. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, he certainly did. Um, hey, I got a big message for Giants fans. Giants fans, Duncan is delivering from more locations than ever. It's now easier to get your faves fast with coffee, donuts, sandwiches, and more brought directly to your door, which is great if you plan on leaving the house at all today or you have a draft to prep for. Price and participation may vary. Exclusions apply. America runs on Duncan. So, uh, we are getting set to introduce the newest member of the New York Football Giants as the Giants with the 50th overall pick in the draft go edge rusher and Aziz Ojaleri out of the University of Georgia is a new member of the New York Giants and he joins us here on Giants Draft Night Live presented by Van Heusen. Aziz, Bob Papa along with Super Bowl champions Sean O'Hara and David Deal, congratulations. Um, what does it feel like? What was it like for you when you heard that the New York Giants had picked up the phone and called you and said, you're coming to Big Blue? Man, it meant the world, man. It was crazy, man. I was just so excited and happy. I'm just so blessed to be here. Can't wait to be a Giant. Can't wait to get there and get ready to work. Hey, listen, uh, before I let the guys in, um, you know, Sean O'Hara, David Deal, they were teammates of Michael Strahan. They were teammates of OCU Minura and Justin Tuck and Jason Pierre-Paul. Forget about the whole Lawrence Taylor thing. I mean, this is a pretty strong tradition that you're coming to with the New York Giants as far as getting after the quarterback. Definitely. Man, what a, what a history of the Giants. Man. I just can't wait to get there and learn from the best of the best and just get ready to work and give them my best, give them my all. Aziz, welcome to the New York Giant family. Congratulations, my man. It's great to see you again. Uh, last time I talked to you, you, you were you were telling us about the move that you created, and 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 you had a special name for it. So uh, I hope you'll share that with Giants fans right here, right now. Oh yeah, man. The move's called the long two. It's just basically just a long arm with the club, with a club on the, at the end of it right away. Just trying to beat the tackle with my speed, my length, my arms. Just uh, you beat the hands, you beat the man. I can't wait to get up there, get to work, and just get get, get sacks for sure. <laughs> you, you've already got the move trademarked. I, I know the Giants are, are excited to have you. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't think you'd, you'd still be available at this point in time. You're certainly talented. Um, I, I know that you can't wait to get here and, and work with some of these guys. Uh, what are the Giants getting in you? And t- tell the Giants fans what kind of player and person they're getting. Oh, yeah, you're getting a great person, a student in the game, just ready to learn, 
great to learn from the best of the best and come in ready to work every single day, just knowing I can get better and learn from the best and just ready to compete. I'm ready to compete. I'm an all-around player. I can do it all for the team. Whatever the team want me to do, I'm ready to work. I'm all in, just ready to go, trying to win games, win Super Bowls. Aziz, David Deal, welcome to the G-Men. We're beyond excited to have you a part of this roster and this family here. As I was sitting here breaking down your film, you know, you remind me of so much of O.C. Humanura, who I was drafted with in 03. Chief O.C. Chief O.C. Humanura. You know, with that said, and with the amount of pass rush moves that you bring, you know, was there certain NFL players or certain defensive ends that you watch on film that you try to replicate your game after? Right, definitely. Uh, I say uh, Von Miller, Shaq Barrett, and Bud Dupree, those type of players, just the way they play the game with the athletic ability, the effort, relentless ability, you know, they could do it all. They're all around players. And, you know, when they, they impact players, QB sack, force fumbles, you know, t- big, big plays. I'm not sure if you had a chance to talk to Co- Coach Joe Judge yet, but I'm just curious uh, what he said to you after welcoming you to the team if you did talk to him. Oh, yeah, just – uh. Can't, but can't, I can't wait to get get me up there, just ready to work, just ready to come in, you know, you come in, be a giant, great, great moment for me, just just ready to work, you know, just get through it, just, I'm so excited, sure. So who, who are you celebrating with tonight, your family, are you back home, what do you got planned for the rest of the night now that you're a New York Giant? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm back home with the family, I'm just celebrating with the family, all my family, family's here. Got a lot family. to be proud of. <laughs> all my family's here. Aziz, in the in the run up to the draft, um, did you have a lot of interaction with the New York Giants? Um, did you get a sense that they were really interested in you? Yes, sir, I did. I definitely did. Were you as the, as this draft was kind of unfolding? Were you were you a little surprised that your name hadn't been called earlier? Yes, sir. I kind of was because I, I was. I was, I was surprised, but I just know I just got to come in ready to work, you know, prove everybody wrong, you know, just, just come in ready to work. And, you know, it's God's timing. So I just thank God for everything that's happening. And I'm just blessed to be here. So let's go. Aziz, I got to ask you, you um, you're going to be joining a couple of former teammates, Lorenzo Carter, uh, one of your teammates from a couple of years ago. But Andrew Thomas, somebody that you know really well, and I'm sure you've had a number of oh, one-on-one yeah. pass rushes with. Uh, I'm curious, has Definitely. he hit you up yet? Have you talked to him? And what kind of what kind of battles are we going to see between you guys in practice? Oh, yeah, man, this is great. Uh, Drew's actually here with me tonight. So, you know, that relationship we got is big, and he's like nice. my big brother to me, so. Those battles in practice going to be just like how they was in Georgia, competitive, going at it every single day, one-on-one, in the run game, pass game. We're just going to keep going at it and keep getting each other better, for sure. Now we know He's that out the- here celebrating with me tonight, so I love him. Aziz, we know that the NFL has changed the number rule. Are you going to try coming in and seeing if you could wear that 13 like a former wide receiver here, or are you going to try a different trend with the number? Hey, man, it's whatever, they, whatever I get to wear, it, I, I'll be happy with it. I'm just happy to be a giant and Ready to get to work for sure, so let's do it. <laughs> Aziz, uh, we want to congratulate you on being drafted by the New York Giants with the 50th overall pick. We wish you nothing but the best of luck, and we look forward to meeting you when you get up to East Rutherford. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Good stuff, Thanks. Aziz. Great, great talking yeah. with you. Aziz Ojalary out of the you University too, of Thank Georgia. You. Selected by the New York Giants in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft. And uh, pretty exciting night for him. And obviously a very exciting night for Giants fans. And the opportunity that the Giants have to add an edge rusher. Again, they executed a trade with the Miami Dolphins. The Giants had the 42nd pick. They traded back to 50. They've acquired the Dolphins' fifth-round draft pick in 2022. So the Giants are adding currency guys. They're adding players to their roster, and clearly they're going with guys that are athletic and dynamic as part of Joe Judge's vision. Yeah, Bob, I mean, certainly added two athletes. Um, Obviously, Kadarius Toney last night uh, with their first-round pick, and I think when you look at at, at Toney, the explosive ability, instant offense aspect, and then with Ojolari, his ability to impact the games, especially on third down. I think that's always key defensively. If you can create havoc for quarterbacks, for offenses, you can certainly create havoc for offensive linemen. <laughs> that's a good thing. And, and I know it's something that we were always up at night 
on Wednesday night, Thursday nights, as we're thinking about game plans, how are we going to handle this guy on third down? How are we going to account for him? Ojolari is that kind of guy. I think this is the piece that Giants fans have been looking for on the defensive side of the ball, a pass rusher on the outside that can get after the quarterback. And we know with Patrick Graham in this scheme, they're looking forward to 2021 with the type of packages that they're going to be able to run and the flexibility based upon what this team has done through free agency and now through the draft. Bob, you, you also asked him if he was a little bit surprised if he was still available. And you know what? Listen, give me a hungry dog. Give me a yeah. hungry bulldog with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder that's out to prove that he should have gone a little bit higher. I, I like that aspect. That's why there's always great value in the second round. Hey, Giants fans, don't forget, uh, we will be back once the Giants make their pick in round number three for Draft Night Live, presented by Van Heusen. And for the latest breaking news on everything with the Giants, for all the interviews with head coach Joe Judge, Dave Gettleman, Chris Pettit, uh, and all the reaction, make sure you go to all the Giants' social media platforms. So for Sean O'Hara and David Deal, I'm Bob Papa. Hey, we'll be back in just a little bit. As soon as the Giants make their pick in the third round, check us out. <laughs>